very good friends, obviously, so we thought, why don't we go on tour? And also, we, we'd already done a few Radio X nights um, in London and one in Manchester, one in Cardiff, and they'd been a lot of fun. And it sold well enough for us to think that there'd be people who wanted to come again. So uh, it was just, I think if you're stand-up comedians on, on, a, on a radio show, it makes perfect sense to try and tour it. Yeah. Because you don't have to learn those skills from scratch, you're already gigging most nights anyway. So it would be fun to turn it to gigs. Also, I think um, a radio is a sort of very personal medium where you have quite a unique access to someone's time, but it's they're very solitary when they're listening to it. They might be driving or on their, a lot of people, I think, listen to our podcast on the commute on a Monday morning. Yeah. So <clears throat> we just wanted to be able to, for them to experience the live thing. So stand up, you're coming to people who don't know you live for the first time. Whereas with the podcast, it's nice to be able, there's an excitement about seeing someone who you've listened to once a week for two years, and then you get to sort of share with them that live experience. And some, some DJs uh, have tried to do stand-up because they're funny on radio, um, but obviously it's a very different thing and it takes you a long time to learn how to be a stand-up, but we'd, we'd already done that part yeah. of it. So um, we're just really looking forward to performing in front of people who get us and like us because <laughs> it, it makes a real difference if you know I, th I think with stand-up it's a bit like um, a, sp a, a sort of if you're an athlete or a sports person you feed off the crowd so the gigs we've done as the two of us have been um, there's been a lot of momentum to work with yeah. which is which is sort of thrilling if you're a, if you're a stand-up. There'll be lots of the regular features from the show like uh Textual healing and winner plays on. Yeah, we're going to do that live, and it's very tense. And I think listeners love uh, the competitive element of it, and that will be ramped up when we're doing it in front of you know hundreds of people. So I'm really looking forward to that. We've got a few things planned that have grown out of the show, um, but which we can't do on the show. So mm -hmm. that's and it, it's a sort of treat really for the loyal listeners because we're going to take things a little bit further than you could maybe. When you're broadcasting on a Saturday afternoon, yeah, um, it, yeah, there's going to be a few deep cuts for um, our loyal fan base. Also, it's really nice for them to meet each other because they set up someone set up a Facebook fan page, which is obviously very flattering. But what's nice is within weeks that seems to have become the sort of hangout for like-minded people. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a safe people, space. Yeah, and people sort of saying that they like to go on there when they first log on to Facebook in the morning to sort of prepare them for all the sort of nonsense they get on their news feeds from other people and they go somewhere where it's just the thing, the a thing, radio friendly safe space. The thing I find amazing about the people who listen to our show is that whenever they meet they get on. Well to, to um, appropriate a, a line the comedian Daniel Kitson used to have, all of if all our fans went to a party, they'd get on, but they're not the sort of people that would go to parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said about he said about if all the musicians it's, are yeah, like music at a party. I, uh, you know, both John and I used to like quite obscure bands. Still do, and the exciting thing about seeing Deer Hoof live hmm. is that you think, oh, great, everyone likes Deer Hoof, and then you realise that the eight hundred, the hundred and fifty people who are at the gig are the only people who care, but. For those couple of, for that couple of hours, it's, it's it's really nice to think that the world's become cool. Yeah. So um, it was quite flattering that when we started doing live gigs, to realise that the atmosphere was so friendly. So uh, yeah, we've even isn't there a isn't there like a PCD relationship? Didn't they meet or something? Someone conceived a baby after a gig I did. <laughs> but, Straight um, after or yeah, yeah not doing during. the interval. Oh, right. Um, but then they sort of tweeted about it with a, the scan of the baby and oh, I yeah. didn't retweet it because I feel slightly uneasy about the uh, the old fetus scan profile pic. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people do it. It seems to be the thing now. You know, tell, you, tell your parents, think of a name, give a photo of your unborn child's fetus to the world. Yeah. Which I feel slightly uncomfortable with, but still, best of luck. Best of luck to them and the fetus. Yes. Yeah. It'll be a baby one day. 
Um, when well, fingers crossed, and that's why you should never put it as your profile picture. Yeah. Really. 